it is great to be back and we are delighted to be here in Donegal to both experience and to capture all of the best of the action from the 23 Wilton Recycling Donegal International Rally. As we know, this is a marathon event. It's over three days and over 280 kilometers. Those stages begin on day one, they're centered around Donegal Town. It's years since those have been used, which will leave today a little bit of an even playing field for the drivers. So there's nothing else to wait for. I'll hand you over to our commentator, John Kenny. Thanks, Breed. It's good to have you back. If last year's Donegal International was anything to go by, this year's three-day event, the longest rally on the Sam Deck Irish Tarmac Rally Championship, has all the signs of being just as exhilarating. Callum Devine is the tarmac form driver. He was so lucky 12 months ago in Donegal as the Derry drivers off on Sunday's opening stage cost him a victory. The defending champion is Josh Moffat. He's back determined to win again and get his championship push back on track. Look, there's a lot of really good stages out there and I suppose with the new stages tomorrow, um, it's going to make it interesting. It's, it's new territory for everybody. So, yeah, look, I think we're in for a good weekend. Devine is back again, looking to rectify the wrongs of 2022, and the Circuit of Ireland and Rally of the Lakes winner also wants to extend his championship lead. Yeah, look, it's going to be a tight three days, and yeah, hopefully we're there thereabouts at the end of it. The top ten has been complemented by defending British champion Matt Edwards. Edwards, too, is looking to become the second overseas driver to win a tarmac round this season. You know, it's not very often you get the stages and the atmosphere in a rally, so it's, uh, it's great to be part of, and... You know, we're very lucky, thanks to all the sponsors that have come in again to help us out. And, uh, you know, we're indebted to them and we're just going to try and put on a bit of a show and ultimately enjoy ourselves because that's when we do well. The top ten, though, is littered with former Donegal and indeed Tarmac Championship winners. And Annie are capable of winning this weekend. Kevin Gallagher will look to defend his national title in the Darien T90 with the likes of Kevin Eves, Gary Kiernan, Declan Gallagher hot on his heels in the modified section. One of whom is a brand new sponsor of the rally, Rodney Wilton of Wilton Recycling. Ten years since I uh, done Donegal, and um, you'll go to no other rally and see crowds like this uh, turning out for a pre-event of a what Thursday evening. Wait till tomorrow evening, Saturday evening, Sunday evening. It'll be phenomenal. And so to the action and the opening six stages on day one. Parts of the stages were used in 2009 on Rally Ireland and the rally has moved south for the latest edition with three runs run twice between Ballyshannon and Donegal Town. Josh Moffat and Andy Hayes, the 2022 winners, finished Friday's opening six stages with a 4.9 second lead over Callum Devine and Noel O'Sullivan. The reigning champions Hyundai I-20 or 5 was the fastest over Donegal Bay Rock Hill and Copany to set fastest times on all three stages to take the overnight lead. But Josh, everything seemed to just click into place for you this morning. Yeah, so far so good. I, I think we we're fastest there in the first three stages. So, yeah, look, there's not much we can complain about at the minute. Three, two, one, go. Devine was left 11.3 seconds behind Moffat heading into service. The Circuit of Ireland and Rally of the Lakes winner had an eventful start to the Donegal Rally. Heavy landing on stage two cracked his Volkswagen Polo's R5 windscreen. King over bad jump, go, dip, 200, over bumps. Another landing on stage three, almost seen him in the hedge. Six right over bad dip, 50, line short, five right in, over big crest, jump and right on crest, jump and slight left. Go, 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 go. Slight left here and flat crest and a dip here. 170 over crest, turn hip and right around the base. Just watch your break and check everything here. He went on, though, to finish the stage. <laughs> That's our bad. That's our I'll tell you one thing, boys. We're trying to get the service. Aye. My God, <laughs> lad. Did you see that? Oh. That was the biggest moment that I've had. <laughs> I thought I'd just stand the brakes. I was like, please, please. That is the biggest moment I've had in a rally car. Oh. Do you think there is much more to give in the tank after tackle those stages again? They are difficult ones. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> no, I think we will. Hey, we have a we have a handbrake issues there, so we did, and the guys are trying to bleed it there and get it sorted there. So hopefully, like it's a sort of now going back in, and uh, yeah, we'll see. Sam Moffat in the I-20 was third after the open loop, and on Friday afternoon moved 10.7 seconds ahead of Gary Jennings at the end of stage six. 
Jennings Ford Fiesta Rally 2 car was giving it all. He hit a curb on Copany and lost third to Moffat on the third stage. The Fermanagh driver fell back to within 0.9 of a second of Desi Henry, who was upping the pace in fifth. Flat left over crest, 80. Flat left max over junction, 100. Flat two left, 150. Right entry, chicane, four wheels. Four wheels. A decent start by Henry and Paddy Robinson in the Citroen. They would have been happy with their day's exploits. Marion Evans and Jonathan Jackson, winners of the opening round in Galway, were sixth overnight in their polo. Matt Edwards was down in seventh after six. His polo R5 struggled with the rear differential issue. From the very first stage, his chances of winning looking beyond him after only six stages. David Moynihan is his co-driver. Edwards was one minute and five seconds off the rally lead. Right max over drop crest jump, 200 over bumps, into left max over bumps, 500. Not there at all, no. Robert Barable and Gordon Noble back in the series this year after a prolonged absence was seventh at the end of day one. 6.8 seconds off Edwards. Left over crest, OK, continues, 80. Five right over crest, 120. Six left over crest, 100. Narrow five left, bump five right, 120. David Kelly and Dino Sullivan in the Citroen C3 were 7.8 seconds off Barable in a tightly packed top 10. They were ninth. Flat one left, 80. Flat two right over crest, OK, 150. Flat one left, past the wall, OK, 130. Fast two left, narrows and flat two right, half long, 100. Middle over crest, 50. Johnny Greer and Niall Burns rounded off the top 10 and the Citroen equal on time with ninth place Kelly. Ryan Lochran and Gareth Doherty in the Ford Fiesta R5. Former Mark II competitor, his first international in an R5 and they were in 11th despite the spin and stall. Six left over crest and five right carry go. 200 over bumps, six left, five right, can I go, 200, four right, plus, plus, four right, plus, plus, flat crest jump, 150, left and flat crest jump, 60, left and flat crest jump, 60 and a flat five right. Gareth McHale and Brian Murphy in the VW Polo, a former champion and a former champion navigator. They were 12th, almost two minutes off the overall lead. Adrian Ray and Martin Brady in the polo. They were 16th overall after day one. Jason Mitchell and Paddy McCrudden in another polo were well ensconced inside the top 20. Declan Boyle and Patrick Walsh in a Citroen were eight seconds off McHale as a going car with the former Irish Tarmac champion. Stop, five left, big three. One left and salute through dip, 80. Two right cut and salute past lane, 150. Four left of the crest cut and salute, 150. One right, stop dead, 40. Six right of pole, watch you break it. As a local businessman, you yourself offer huge support to this event. Yes, definitely. It's nice to help out and, uh, you know, it's good for the county, good for, for business and everything else. So good, good to support them. Declan is also supporting his two sons in their early rally careers. Michael Boyle had turbo issues from the off, which left him and co-driver Derek McCafferty playing catch-up in the VW Polo. Whilst younger son Matthew Boyle was going well, with Gary Byrne calling the notes in the Ford Fiesta. Another local businessman putting something back into the sport he loves is PJ McDermott. PJ has passed on the love of rallying to his son PJ Jr., who's just starting out on his rallying journey with his friend and co-driver, John Callaghan. Uh, I got under rallying through my father. I've always admired and watched him growing up and he got me into the rallying suite. My dream was would be to be a professional rally and compete in the European stages. That would be my dream. Fellow local Kevin Gallagher has already made some of his biggest dreams come true, having won the two-wheel drive section of the Donegal Rally last year. He also makes his living by building and supplying rally engines from his workshop 
near the famous Nokara stage. I started doing uh, rally engines back about probably 12 years ago now. We have about 35 engines doing the rally. Um, so 2.5s with the likes of Kevin Eves, Damien Turish, Declan Gallagher, Gary Kiernan, Chris Rowe Callahan. They'd be all running our 2.5 engine. Um, in the two litre class, you'd have Johnny Jordan, um, Ollie Benton. I look, there, there are a load of them, it's hard to name them all. And then we'd have a few R5 engines as well. We'd do a few R5 Fiesta engines as well. Any of the lads that we have engines in with, we, we get on well with them and uh, we try to look after them the best we can. Like. So in modifieds, Kevin Gallagher held a 10.3 second advantage over Kevin Eves, the local Darien driver, happy with his day's work on the stages, which are probably less suited to his two-wheeled right-hand drive T90. And we go in car with co-driver Ryan Moore. Flat one left, 150. Caution, tight two left, narrows, bumpy. 40, then a flat one right. 100, up to crest, slow one. 66 right and 4 right into tight 5 left don't cut tight into 3 Ferrari turn away with it 3 right over bump cross roads Daniel McKenna and Andrew Greenan in the Ford Escort Mark 2 retired before stage 6 Former modified champion and local band Kevin Eves had a flapping bonnet. What? Not my bonnet. Forty. A shiny five left in past houses. Caution six right two crest step two fifty. And then a very big moment on stage three. Six left. <laughs> Six hundred. No, not Caution, that one. Late, two left, minus this one. Forty. Caution five right minus continues and tightens nip sixty. Oh. Go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. 60. Six left past the house. 60. Five left on craft over the finish. Well, the damage was obviously in the opening loop, but thankfully you were able to make that up. Aye, hey, we, we were actually very, very lucky, aye, because we bent cross members and bottom arm, and but we done a lot, a lot of harm, hey, in 25 minutes the boys done well to kind of get it back together so we're just sitting in behind Kevin Goller but to be truthful we're happy because tomorrow I think he's gonna we get to knock Alan and the likes of that hey he'll be uh, he'll walk away from us so we're happy enough for we're sitting. David Bogey and John Rowan sixth after five in modified then retired. Gary Kiernan and Damien Tourish were battling for the final podium spot with Kiernan holding a slender 0.9 second advantage overnight in the Ford Escort. As we head for Park Fermi, let me catch up with the leaders. A nice, comfortable position to be in after day one here, Josh. Yeah, look at it. Certainly uh, nice to be leading after day one. It's, uh, ah, it's been tough stages out there. It's been a lot of competition there, and Callum's certainly been pushing us. Um, yeah, so look at only 4.9 ahead at the minute, so it's really not much considering how far we have to go yet. Callum, the windscreen is testament to the trickiness of the stages today and the speed out there. Yeah, yeah, the stages have been high speed and very bumpy too, so yeah, had a bad compression, the windscreen, but yeah, we'll get a change tonight now and be ready to go again. You've got lots of experience here in Donegal and of course you've taken the title here twice. It would be nice to make that hat trick. Uh, it would, but there's a lot of tight pace there now to try and do it, but the weather conditions tomorrow is going to be tricky, so let's see what happens. Anything can happen in that in, in, with a bit of rain, so we'll definitely be going for it. Leaderboard then after day one is Josh Moffat, who leads 4.9 seconds ahead of Callum Devine. Sam Moffat is third, 24 seconds behind Devine, then Jennings in fourth, and Desi Henry just behind Jennings in fifth. After day one, Rally HQ moves to Letterkenny. But before we left Donegal Town behind, we made a visit to a must-see local attraction, the Stables Motorsport Centre, owned by former Irish tarmac champion Donna Kelly. I started collecting cars uh, many years ago, and then um, the whole idea of uh, displaying the cars, um, you know, there's no point in having cars when nobody sees them. Uh, then it was the whole thing of the memorabilia, and then telling the story of our sport. Um, you know, we're a minority sport, we want to keep interest in the sport, you know, and by showcasing the past, um, I think it gets people interested and 
for me, preserving uh, the history of our sport. Uh, and there's a big theme here, UK and Ireland. We've had so much uh, contribution from so many uh, people uh, in giving us uh, programs, photographs, race suits, you know, so much, even on the World Championship uh, stage, you know, where we have the drivers that are happy to, to give us some of their overalls, etc. because people see the importance of this, you know, and it is here to be enjoyed. And yeah, I get great uh, enjoyment out of letting people come here, spend time here and uh, yeah, enjoy what we've built. Yeah, my dream rally is my local rally. It's uh, the Donegal rally, you know, you can talk uh, Monte Carlo and you can talk about all these iconic events, but here, uh, Donegal is uh, number one for me. We'll see you for part two shortly. And Moffat, hold on to that lead. Welcome, Mike, to County Donegal on the northwest coast of Ireland, where the wild Atlantic Way winds its way across some of the most spectacular scenery in the country. From Fanad Lighthouse to Killybegs, Doe Castle to Sleeve League, Donegal is a breathtaking place to visit. One of these stunning locations is where it all began for the Donegal Rally, as Breed visited Rossapenna Golf Club to meet some of the founding members of the event. Uh, the very first Donegal International Rally took place in 1972, but that would not have occurred if it wasn't due to some of these legends I'm sitting amongst here this morning. Fonsis, you were there. Tell us how it all started. Uh, it started in Milford Hotel uh, at a motor club uh, meeting, and eventually we ran a couple of rallies and then decided on an international. And I was approached by Michael McGee, of Downing's uh, father of the present Martin McGee uh, to take it here to Rossapenna. And it was sponsored by the Sheephaven uh, Angling Club and uh, Milford Donegal Bakery and the Donegal Oil Company. It was a very successful event. We had it filmed by RTE. We provided them with a helicopter uh, and that was 72, which was <laughs> something, <laughs> something else. I always look forward to coming to Donegal from 1972 was my first event and I competed in the Mark I Escort. I got involved with the late Bertie Fisher and Bertie went on to win the Donegal International Rally uh, a number of times, I think it's five in total. The crowds that were in Remelton, the way it was run, there just wasn't Remelton and the crowds in Arakani and especially when you come down to uh, Gallagher, in front of Gallagher's Hotel, the urban left. There were the days. There's a uniqueness about the atmosphere in Donegal that there's nowhere else. That's the best event in, in Ireland, and we're all still enjoying it 50 years later. Seamus, you were also involved from the very beginning. Oh, it was great, you know, when you had Cahill Curley and Billy Coleman from Cork. And, well, he was some of the big stars at that time. We found out that Mr Curley was practicing every night uh -huh. <laughs> and Billy Coleman <laughs> and, and, and at one stage I had a farmer coming in to me and saying that the event wasn't going to run on the Glen stage because of this activity and uh, a friend of mine who was in the Garde Shiokana as I say uh, he told me that uh, this farmer was on the dole. <laughs> so he approached him and it ended up that uh, the following morning he was back in to me to say that uh, how many bales did I want on the stage? <laughs> Welcome to day two of the Wilton Recycling Donegal International Rally. Well, the weather has taken a turn here, but we are rallying in Ireland and it's almost to be expected. 
This stage is on the cards to the, the infamous and legendary Nakala stage and spectators have been ascending Nakala since the early hours of this morning for one of the greatest spectacles in Irish motorsport. But before the guys reach this stage, they have to first tackle Carnhill and Gargort. So for that, we will pass you back to commentator John Kenny once again. And with the cheer, we resume. And in contrast to the warm sunshine of day one, the heavens opened on day two morning to give the crews a difficult tyre choice as they left the Letterkenny service area. Carn Hill will be the third longest stage of the three-day event. The 15-kilometre test has some narrow sections adding to its fast nature. Another familiar Donegal stage is Gary Gort, one that wasn't used 12 months ago, while Knock Alla is the one that everyone is waiting for. And so to the action on stages 7, 8 and 9. And Vine was fastest on a wet Carnhill stage, beating Josh Moffat by 5.3 seconds, moving him into a 0.4 second of a lead. Moffat responded straight away on Saturday's second test to Gary Gort. His Hyundai i20 or 5 was fastest through stage 8 by 1.1 seconds, retaking the lead from Devine. But the duel continued as the cars traversed the famous knockout of hairpins. The stage was delayed for an hour with rain falling. Devine, though, attacked his Volkswagen Polo or 5 was rewarded with a time 7.2 seconds faster than Josh Moffat. After Saturday's first loop of three stages, the rally lead was back in Devine's hands. Three left opens. One fifty up. Line five left at the sign, 60. Line four right minus keep. And uh, four left continues and opens over crest. And slide right, 120 down the middle, slowing. Matt Edwards was the fastest driver over Knockalla. His differential troubles on day one meant that the Welshman was chasing a top five position now. His first stage win of the weekend put him within two seconds of sixth place Desi Henry. Right title four minus over crest, 130. Flat five left, opens for 80. Nips the flat five line, 180. Slot square eight minus room, don't. Don't know. 80, right max over crest. 150 up. Sam Moffat and Gary Jennings had distanced themselves in third and fourth place. Sam was 35.7 seconds off his younger brother after nine. Jennings was 20.2 seconds behind Sam as we go in car over Nakala with the former champion. Turn past Serpent right, double Titans and late. Drive it. 150 up. Stay right and the past four left, double Titans continues line. 40. Flat left. 60. Welshman Marion Evans had jumped into fifth, 5.6 seconds behind Jennings. As we go to the start of the stage and look at the modifieds, here's their top three. Kevin Gallagher and Ryan Moore in the Darien continue to lead. They were 12th overall. Very wet for the two waiters, Kevin Eves and Chris Malley, together in the Toyota Corolla twin cam, trying desperately to chase down Gallagher. While Damien Tourish and Donald McAnally were in the Ford Escort, 13 odd seconds off Eves after nine. Huge crowds. And Mrs. Scott there, big local fan.
Mrs Scott, I don't think I've met a more dedicated rally fan here this weekend. I'm following it for 50 years. Only missed it twice in the 50 years. And I love it. I wouldn't miss it for anything. Our first look at historics then. And the leaders up till stage eight, that was Adrian Hedrington and Ronan O'Neill in their Ford Escort RS 1800 before they left the scene. Ditto for Tomas O'Connell. He took over the lead, but he didn't see a day two, retiring at the end of 13 stages. The new leaders then, Michael McDade and Daniel Casey in their Ford Escort RS 1800. Second, the defending champion, Duncan Williams, looking for more championship points. While third in historics, Trevor Wilson and Paul Mulholland in the Mark II as we go back to service. And you never know who you might bump into there. A birdie told me it was somebody's birthday this weekend, and what better place to be? Well, sure, yeah, Donegal, it has to be one of the best places to be. Probably the sun wasn't shining, but we'll maybe get that tomorrow. I'm sure you have some fantastic memories from this rally over the years, Kenny. Oh, lots of good ones from Group 4 Escort days, Group 1 RS 2000, you know, Subaru Legacy, Cossies. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. One man who's seen it all over the years is Alan Plum Tindall. The former OPM reporter director has brought some magic moments to our screens over the years. And now he's sharing more memories from the golden era of rallying with his latest book, The Kerry Dancers. So you've started putting pen to paper and you're displaying a book here. It looks fabulous. Tell us a wee bit about it. Well, I, I thought I would just, the, the sort of pictorial records of each region of the Tarmac Championship. So I started with Donegal, then I did Galway, uh, and then I did uh, the two Cork rallies, uh, Killarney, and I'm working at the moment on the Ulster rally. So. That'll be, uh, that'll be six of them. I'm sure you have so many fond memories of this rally. Oh, absolutely, right from the very beginning and when it started in Rosapenna and then moved to Letterkenny. It's the first time I've been up here. It's the first time the car's really stuck it. Yeah, so I must be thankful to my mechanics for that. Now, tell me, what do you normally do for a living? I mean, you know, I... <laughs> oh, I do various things. I'm a contractor and a publican. Uh, well, my dad, uh, John Connor, obviously, he rallied for about uh, 15 years or so. Um, he had a multitude of different vehicles, but from a Mark I Escort, Mark II, Chevette, uh, and then Manta. Last rally car he would have had was a uh, Escort Cosworth. He would have hired the Manta and the Cosworth of uh, Phil Collins from Wales. In 1987, obviously Bertie's first uh, Donegal International Rally won. Uh, my dad was also second that year. And strangely enough, third place was James McDade from Letterkenny. And unfortunately now the three of them have passed away. How did you get hooked on this game? Uh, I was always kind of mad for motorsport, you know. So I eventually bought a car. It's like all bad habits, it sticks to you. <laughs> Competitors this weekend, uh, Martin McGee would be a local to Downings here. Um, he used to live just across the road from us and he would have got the bug from my dad. Uh, when he was younger, he used to come down every Sunday after Mass and my dad would take him in the Chevette or whatever rally car was sitting out the back and take him around the Atlantic Drive every Sunday. And uh, if anyone else happened to be there, he used to throw Martin into the roll cage and tell him to hold on tight. And that was where Martin got the, the bug back in the day. So, from days gone by, back to the present day, and we catch up with the leaders. Are there issues to be ironed out in this service here, Callum? Ah, only these small ones, hey, we had a little bit of issue with intercom, you know, so, yeah, we had a spare one anyway, so we're prepared for stuff like that, so, oh, we'll get it sorted now again. OK, a bit to do this afternoon yet, Josh? Yeah, look at it, I suppose we're just struggling for grip there in those last few stages, and, and Callum's extended his lead now to 15 seconds, so... Yeah, look, we need to try something else here. It's just not working for us at the minute, so we have a few decisions to be made yet there, so hopefully we, we make the right one. So nine stages down. Donegal International is getting interesting now. Divine leads by 6.5 seconds. Sam Moffat is third ahead of Jennings and Marion Evans. Join us for part three after the break.
Welcome back. Sadly, conditions continue to deteriorate for the afternoon stages of day two. Always to the fore in Irish motorsports, safety is paramount at the Donegal Rally. And a big part of that are the core safety cars that sweep the stages before and after the competitors. Also important are the warning signs and competitor decals provided in large part by local company CBM Signs. CBM Signs are very busy all year round. Uh, with a couple of different sections where number plates and cars, rally cars and van writing and van wraps is what we're most famous for. But we do a lot of shop fitting and shop signs and safety signs and warning signs and construction signs and 3D signs and light box signs. Basically any kind of sign you can think of, we'll, we'll, get, we'll get it ready for you here. This weekend we could be doing up to 25 to 30 cars, um, all depending if they get entries and get going and we're doing everything from the Clubman car at the end right up to the latest R5s with a couple of UK customers over this year. I think the last survey they've done, the Donegal International Eyes were something like 20 million to the local economy in Donegal. Um, sure spreads everywhere this year going to Donegal Town, the whole way down to Downing's, Fanad. Um, sure goes all around the county and uh, there's people staying as far away as Sligo and Derry. Um, rooms are booked out everywhere, Downing's, all these places benefit and they benefit the rest of the year round as well. A lot of the crews come back, a lot of crews have holiday homes over the years in different parts of Donegal and you see them all during the year and uh, a lot of visitors come back again once they see the beauty of Donegal. Callum Devine had braved the wet conditions early on in day two to overtake Josh Moffat. Sam Moffat and Gary Jennings were third and fourth, while Marion Evans had jumped into fifth, 5.6 seconds behind Jennings. Following Saturday's lunchtime service halt, Devine repeated his Carnhill stage win to extend his lead to 9.8 seconds. Six left over crest and the line. Three right over crest. 60. Six left and short of five left. 140. Turn slot square right plus slippy. Slight right over crest. 300 up. Josh Moffat was the man to beat through Gary Gort too, keeping the pressure on Devine. In drying conditions, knock Adams again to beat Josh Moffat's undoing in his battle with Devine. He was only the eighth fastest through the final run of knock Alla, losing 6.9 seconds to the rally leader. He'd stay second though at the end of the day, but less than five seconds now off Devine. Sam Moffat and Keith Moriarty in the Hyundai I-20 remained in third place on the last place of the podium. Matt Edwards affirmed his mastery of Nokala with the fastest time second time around and was over seven seconds quicker than anyone else. What a pity he had problems on day one as his efforts propelled Edwards up to fourth equal. Left is over flat crest. 60 over bumps. Five right long. Nips lead okay. 100 smooth. Three right minus fast in. 100. Right. Into left, and Chicane, right entry. And flat crest. 80, left max. The Welshman was level on time with Gary Jennings. And flat right max. 40, middle over flat crest. And flat left. 100. Fast five right continues. Go. 200. Right entry, Chicane, four rails. Four rails. Crest. And stay left. And the flat two right line. 60. Flat two left. And Edwards was 5.7 seconds ahead now of his compatriot, Marion Evans. Rob Barrable and Gordon Noble in the Citroen C3 were seventh. 20 seconds off Evans with the roads drying all the time. Five left minus and four right minus into five left minus over crest, 40, six right, 80. Next through Ryan Lochran and Gareth Doherty in the Ford Fiesta or five. Really good run up to seventh place overall for Lochran and Doherty. Johnny Greer was safely ensconced inside the top 10, alongside Niall Burns in the Citroen C3 Rally 2. 
In the modified or national section, Kevin Gallagher continued to lead in the Darien T90 GT Ori. He had a huge lead now over Kevin Eaves and Chris Melly in the Toyota Corolla Twin Cam. Third place in the nationals or modified section, Damien Tourish in the Ford Escort. There was a really good battle going on behind them for the minor places. And in 20th overall, David Moffat and Martin Connolly in the Toyota Starlet rear wheel drive. Eddie Doherty and Killian McCardle next through in the Ford Escort Mark II. Some spectacular slow motion shots of Doherty and McCardle out on the stages. 60. Lane by Leonard the Seine. 60. Lane past three right plus. Don't pass Carbrook Hugley it. In the very long five left from across Hugley it. 40 down. Six right. 130 down the middle. Lead four right same mid. In the caution very long four right past Park and must Hugley it. John Bonner and Johnny Bird. Next through in the Ford Escort, Mark II. Really good battle between them and Johnny Jordan and Gary McNairn in the Toyota Starlet. Good battle for those minor places. There was only 10.5 seconds between Bonner and Johnny Jordan. And just 4.6 seconds off the Jordan McNairn pair were Patrick McHugh and Porrick O'Donnell in the Mark II. Flat pressed, 100, flat to right, go. Repeat, flat to right, go, to left, 80. Go on, go on, go on, go on, go on, go on, come back. Square right. Good man. 270 up middle, go now again. Go, 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 on three right, push again. Go, 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 go. 200, go, 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 go. 300 press, jump 40. Fast four left, opens. And flat one left, tightens a two left, go, 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 over, bumps 100. Go, 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 100. Car four right, watch it. Flat crest, flat two right, go, 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 flat crest, bump, go, 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 go. Flat one left in the middle, or crest 100, go, go, go. Sloppy braking, five left, pass junction. 40. Late short, four right. Go, 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 go. Flat two left, go, 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 flat crest, go again, go, go, go. Flat crest jump, go, 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 flat one left, go, 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 100. Very tight, three right and square left, slippy. Go on, go on, square left now. 100 over the finish. Go, 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 go. 11 seconds for the back. Kyle McGettigan and Dale McGettigan in the Ford Escort Mark II. Lots of support out on the wet stages for rally sponsor Rodney Wilton, who seemed to be reveling in the wet conditions up Nokala. One of many local businessmen supporting the rally is Martin McGee, as we take a look at Nokala from inside his escort now, with Connor Foley calling the notes. 100. Harpin right. Two hundred. Open hairpin left. Eighty. One left, eighty. Three left at the same. And four right in. And two left over big crest. Remember the last time. Four, two left, big crest. One hundred down. Two right at bush and left. Two right, bush and left. One hundred fifty. Very long. Two right. The success of the Donegal International Rally comes down to people like these two guys. Martin McGee, you've been involved with the Donegal Club for so many years and it takes people like you to be involved to run an event like this. Yeah, like the people didn't hesitate. The people I rang, they're all, some of them are club members, some of them are just interested in rallying and they just said sure. Like it didn't take any more than five minutes to put the whole thing together. You know, financially, there's a lot of work behind the scenes, but they, they were all just so enthusiastic, like it's so encouraging. And hopefully they'll be there next year again. 
Rodney, you're at the helm of sponsorship for this event. Such an important event, such a huge one in the Irish Rally calendar. What does it mean to you? Yeah, it means uh, means everything to us. And uh, if you see the crowds around, see uh, even our merchandise on people at this stage, it's uh, it's gone beyond our expectations. Uh, and we're very, very lucky to get the chance to sponsor it. I believe the rally has been one of the biggest sort of instigators of the tourism industry in Donegal. People saw the rally on TV, you know, coming from the north, coming from England, and they just kept coming back and back. Like, say, this year, I have friends over from England. They came four years ago, and this, this is their fourth year here. They stay for a week, they tour the county, they spend money, and they're going back taking their friends over. Then that group's getting bigger every year, and that's what it's all about. A great friend, Marty McGee, who competes in the rally, and he's just a history of this rally for many, many years, and his family. So that's what's brought us over. And he's a, um, you know, he's Cranford Stone who sponsors it, and we sponsor it. Long Rake Spa Company sponsor his car, and we oh, we just think it's amazing. You know, you're so welcoming. Tell the world, come over and see it. Another overseas visitor is Birmingham's Ollie Benton. Your second visit to Donegal, Ali, what has attracted you back? It has to be just the whole whole buzz about the event. Um, you know, the, the stage is lined with spectators, Nokella, um, famous stages, Atlantic Drive, and, you know, just pure class. We had a spin at the famous hairpin on Nokella, so uh, I'm sure there'll be a few videos of that going on YouTube or Facebook. <laughs> Frank Kelly had a very strong start to the weekend, sitting in around 6th or 7th in the national two-wheel drive up until stage 5, where they picked up a puncture. It was only a few corners into the stage, they had to stop and change the wheel, which cost them around two and a half minutes and any chance of a good result. Three right long trip, 170 to 4 left. 170 to 4 left. 4 left, Kelly, hairpin right. So the leaderboard after day three on the main field, it's Callum Devine, who has a 4.7 second lead over Josh Moffat. Sam Moffat's third, Matt Edwards though is closing in on him, Gary Jennings is in fifth place. And with day two of the rally over, Sunday stages bring another spectacular change of scenery as the action moves to Downings on the Rossgill Peninsula, a place that's home to the Atlantic Drive Test, as well as rally enthusiast and local businessman, William McNutt. William McNutt of Donegal. It's a well-established firm here in Downings. And of course, there are infamous stages around here this weekend. So it means a lot to your type of business here in Downings. Yeah, it brings a lot of people to Downings. Um, most of the people who actually work here are rally fans. So this is like the sacred weekend. Um, it's like the second Christmas of the year. More and more people from overseas. A lot of overseas cars are in this weekend. So it's great to see it. And... Uh, people can come and see what else Downings and Donegal has to offer for the tourist. And of course, William, you're a rally enthusiast yourself, so you appreciate this on your back door this weekend oh, too. It's fantastic, you know, like I've probably been at every one of the, every Donegal rally from the very beginning, even the first one here, and that finished in Downings, I can remember it well. So, no, big enthusiast. Join us for part four after the break. Many of the reasons people flock to Donegal is for this exactly, the peace, the tranquility, the idyllic beaches such as this one. But we'll have to park that for another weekend because the battle is only heating up here on day three 
of the Wilton Recycling Donegal International Rally. The first test on the loop of three stages for day three of the rally is High Glen, which runs loudly through the quiet village of Glen, much to the delights of publican Cormac Walsh and his customers. Oh, the rally means a lot to us over the years. It's been coming to Glen Village for 40 years. We've had loads of uh, spectators over the years, and it's, it's a real uh, standing point for a rally each year. The week before the rally and the week after the rally, we get loads of visitors. Um, you know, they just come to see um, Donegal and uh, the old Glen Bar to look at all the photographs, the past photographs of all the previous winners that we have on the walls. So we have the likes of Wesley Patterson there, Joey Dunlop, a nice um, memorabilia there to uh, the late Manus Kelly. Um, we offer a, a, a great bar here. Um, it's old, traditional, it's about 250 years old with a, a very modern restaurant. Uh, we serve uh, great food and we also have accommodation on site as well. Oh, it's, it's a huge event every year. Um, it brings loads of uh, people um, and it's, uh, it's a great place to watch it. Get ready for the Donegal Rally! Whee! With two runs of High Glen Atlantic Drive and Fanet Head lying ahead on the final day, the stage is set for a thrilling end to what's been a fantastic edition of the Donegal Rally. But drama before the off for Josh Moffat as the crew made their way to the start line. Josh had a loose sump guard, but true to the spirit of Irish rallying, his fellow competitors all chipped in to ensure he got off the line in time. I can't think of another sport in which this happens. It's just remarkable. Well, the overnight leaders, Callum Devine and Noel Sullivan, started the final day by setting the fastest times on High Glen and Atlantic Drive to build up a 17.7 second lead over Josh Moffat heading into Fanet Head. One right to plus. Slight left and five right in over gravel. Short five left, go. 80 up the middle. Short six right to short five left. 50 up the middle past the post line. Short fast four right. 140 up. Two right. Devine's grasp on victory faced a different threat on Fanet Head. The rain had rolled onto the stage. He had hoped his pre Fanet advantage would be enough when he approached the wet sections. It was slippy out there. Past the fence, opens the slight left, slight right, slowing 80 Making up. the foul on the fuck! Late sharp, concentrate now, late sharp, four right, slow up now. It's all to play for today, Callum. It's been a good morning so far. Yeah, it was good up to that stage, so it was really, it's, it's actually soaking in there in places. The rain was coming down that hard. It was damp at the start, then bone dry, and then the rain was, couldn't get the wipers going hard enough there, so. Yeah, look, we, we, we were cautious enough because we were on the full hards here, but. Yeah, what do you do? But what Devine didn't know, though, was that Moffat's rally defence had come to an end. At Fanad, as he slid wide on a left-hander in his Hyundai clattered into a bank, the impact broke the Hyundai's right wheel, putting Moffat out of the rally with three stages remaining. Devine now held a 53.1 second lead over Sam Moffat with a single pass of High Glen, Atlantic Drive and Fanad head left to go. Matt Edwards is now up to third. He would have been in the shakeup had he not had his Friday troubles. Well, I suppose that's rallying. Five right to crest, to left, this over flat crest, a slow crest, three left minus fast. 60, five left in, up to flat crest, five left long, tightness lead, to right over crest long, 80, flat crest, 100, right max of the long crest drop, left for 100 times five on the crest, sudden early four right. Just behind Marion Evans and Jonathan Jackson, they are now up to fourth place. Rising to fifth, Gary Jennings and Rory Kennedy in the Ford Fiesta, 10.1 seconds off the Welsh crew. And Robert Barrable encountered Josh's off on stage 17. And as he described, it was a big one. Into right Titans, four left minus, repeat, four left minus, Josh, 180. Josh is off. Okay. Oh, yeah, we're going on ahead. Yeah, we're going on ahead. Yeah, going ahead. Going ahead. You always have to expect drama on a Sunday here in Donegal. Yeah, the corner before Josh went off, we were running along the head, so it was really, really slippy, but uh, 
I was sad to see him go out where it was. The race was good between him and Callum. So, um, yeah, we're happy enough. Jesus was very slippy when the rain came down inside, but we're happy enough. I don't know how we went time wise, but it was, felt good, didn't it? Good day for Ryan Lochran, his first time in an OR5. He's currently in seventh place, up one. Ryan, you're having a great run this weekend. Aye, it has been a great, great run so far. Hey, we just, um, I suppose we thought we might have had a wee bit more pace today, but I have to remember this is probably our first, this is really only our first proper rally in one of these cars, and it's just, hey, it's been a massive learning curve. Really, really enjoyable, hey, and no, I'm very, very happy. Behind them, competing the top ten. In eighth, Johnny Greer in the Citroen C3 Rally 2. The similar Citroen C3 Rally 2 of Desi Henry was in ninth place, 7.4 seconds adrift of Greer. And the first of the modifieds into the top ten comes Kevin Gallagher in the Darien. He's just a minute behind Desi Henry with three stages to go. Second, it's Kevin Eaves in the Toyota Corolla twin cam, but he had locking brake issues, which he told us. We are, I don't know, we're having a massive brake problem. Hey? We're just have the bias nearly screwed to the back and we're just locking the two front wheels. So we're hemorrhaging. Hopefully Damien's just not going to completely slap us, but we are hemorrhaging tight in the first two. So we'll see if we can get it sorted at night. And in third of the Nationals, it's Damien Tourish in the Ford Escort. <laughs> Well, he's not that far behind. With three stages to go, he might fancy a crack at second place. Well, that stage wasn't one favoured by many of the drivers. What about yourself? Hey, it wasn't too bad. There was a wee bit second places where a lot of... It was wet, one man, dry. I don't know how the rain actually fell so tight together. The end was grand, but... Hey, uh, no, we enjoyed it. Good enough run. So, with dark clouds and thunderstorms gathering on the horizon, one might wonder why someone would go to all the trouble of competing in such a challenging event. But back at Letterkenny, the Jim Kennedy Perpetual Trophy awaits the overall winner of the Wilton Recycling Donegal Rally. It's a trophy with a storied history that begins with one of the rally's founder members and sponsors, Derek McMahon of the Donegal Oil Company, as his son Arthur explains. So my dad was a founder member, Derek was a founder member of Donegal Motor Club and the firm has been involved in sponsoring the event for over 20 years back in the day uh, through Shell and Donegal Oil Company. Uh, so we presented this trophy in memory of Jim Kennedy who also worked here all his life and that's Jim's is Rory's or was Rory's dad. So a lot of history between uh, this firm and the event. There's not just the overall prize up for grabs, as there are numerous class awards to be claimed, along with the bragging rights for some of the many competing local crews battling it out to be the top dog on their home stages. Jason Mooney and Eamon Bonner. This is Jason's second Donegal International Rally in a self-built Fiesta. Terence Diver and Des Sherlock. Terence is the typical Donegal man, sponsoring the rally for years and competing when he can find the time. Josh Harris is the third generation of the Harris family doing the rally, son of the super quick Paul and grandson of Jackie Harris. Barry McLaughlin is the man keeping the Mark I Escort alive, another man with an engine failure on Friday who stayed up all night to make sure he was in action on Saturday. Willie McFann is another man keeping the Escort alive, this time the G3. Willie always gives giant kidding performances in his self-built car with his daughter, Demi, calling the notes. Martin McGee and Conor Foley were the quickest two-wheel drive crew on Atlantic Drive, giving McGee the bragging rights for his local stage and the unofficial title of King of the Drive. Three left past the house and two right into crest five right on the scene and crest what do you call these houses tin pots tin pots on scene five left 30 two left see it 63 right another well-known businessman from donegal declan Boyle, better known as proprietor of mccafferty's bars but also builds his own rally cars for himself and his two sons <laughs> Yian Lloyd, part of a Welsh crew, son of the famous escort exponent Gareth Lloyd. Daniel Conaghan, a Donegal stalwart with 30 starts on the Donegal rally. Ian Stewart and Timmy Duggan, another pairing that go back a long way. Ivan's also competed in 30 starts. Anders and Ingrid Jonsson, 
truly international crew coming all the way from Sweden in their Sierra. Donald Keane and Dermot Keane, the pairing turned up in a brand new BDG Escort. Brian Crawford and Finian Hannigan, their lifelong friends and Donegal club members. Dara Bonner and Aaron Friel. Dara is the son of PJ Bonner, who, believe it or not, was Eamon McGee's driver for many years in the G3 Escort. Before we run through the class winners, let's take a look now at some of the other crews down the field who put on an incredible show at this year's Wilton Recycling Donegal Rally. So let's move to the class winners and the juniors in third, Ben McIntyre in the Honda Civic. Seven seconds behind, second place Gary Cassidy and Gary McCrudden in the Honda Civic, who only lost out by one second to Jack McKenna and Damien Doherty in another Civic. In historic, Trevor Wilson finished in third place, 48.2 seconds off the pace. Second, Duncan Williams, whose runner-up finish put him in a near invincible position at the top of the historic standings. And he lost by 29.1 seconds to Michael McDade and Declan Casey in the historic Donegal Rally. Now the class winners, on to class nine. David Gordon and Brian McElhenney, the Donegal crew in the Rover. Across the border from Derry, Eamon McLaughlin and Sean Doherty won class 10. Class 11F, winner Kevin McLaughlin and Aidan Gallagher from County Donegal in the Honda Civic. Class 11R went to the Monaghan pairing of Anthony Hand and Peter Deary in the Escort. Class 12 winners, Sean Moynihan, Podrick O'Donovan from Cork in the RS Ford Escort. Class 13, Johnny Jordan and Gary McNairn from Donegal in the Starlet. Class 15 from Scotland, Jimmy McDowell and Shona Hale in their Impreza. Class 20 won by Trevor Bustard and John McCafferty from County Donegal in a Mitsubishi Evo 9. Class 22 winners, Jason Mooney and Eamon Bonner from Donegal in the Ford Fiesta ST. Class RC3, Brendan Comiskey and Dara Mullen from Monaghan and Meath respectively in the Fiesta. In Class RC4, Dylan Eaves and Ryan Farrell reign supreme, finishing 59.2 seconds ahead of the field. Hazel O'Callaghan and Ella Ryan finished 94th overall in Rally 2. They slid off on a slippery square right on Carnhill, first time through, 
lost time but got going again. It's the first time for both Hazel and Ella to compete in the Donegal Rally, a tough event with tricky conditions, but they were delighted to win the all-female crew award. On to the national class and sadly Kevin Eves retired while he was in second place so fifth went to John Bonner and Johnny Baird in the Mark II. Fourth Eddie Doherty and Killian McArdle in another Mark II. Up to third David Moffat and Martin Connolly in their rear wheel drive the Toyota Starlet. So with Eves out, Damien Tourish into second place along with Donald McAnally in the Ford Escort. And Kevin Gallagher and Ryan Moore brought their Darien T90 safely home to a massive 2 minute 19 second victory in the modifieds. Well, the delight is evident. Defending champion, how does it feel? Oh, soaking, but uh, great weekend. So delighted. It was such a roller coaster of a weekend for you, Kevin. It is just mixed conditions, and but look, uh, we, we, we had a good clean run the whole way, and no trouble. So delighted. And so to the overall, and in ninth place, Desi Henry and Paddy Robinson, just 5.6 seconds off eighth place. <laughs> That went to Gary Jennings and Rory Kennedy, who had a little slippage towards the end of the event. They were 37.2 seconds off seventh. As Johnny Greer climbed into that seventh place in the Citroen Rally 2. Great day for Ryan Lochran, sixth overall in his first time in an OR5. He must have been absolutely chuffed. Dubliner Robert Barrable brought home the Citroen C3 in fifth place. Marion Evans was over two minutes behind the overall leaders in fourth place, but valuable championship points for him. Sam Moffat and Keith Moriarty, 39.1 seconds off the overall winners in third place. Matt Edwards steamrolled his way through the second and third day, but couldn't quite catch the leaders. 55.5 seconds for the Westman in second place. And Callum Devine and Nolo Sullivan survived challenging weather conditions to claim their first Donegal international victory, making a hat-trick of wins in this year's championship. The Volkswagen Polo or 5 duo put their Donegal demons of 12 months ago to bed, finishing 55.5 seconds ahead of Edwards. There were very emotional scenes in car and at the end of the final stage. A line, five right minus, go, 170. Over. <laughs> Finish. Yes, my friend. <laughs> yes, boys. <laughs> yes, oh, boys. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> hey? Oh. Yes, Canham Divine, boy. <laughs> rally, oh. rally winner. <laughs> the rally winner, boy. Hey? Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> the rally winner, boy. Hey? Oh. <laughs> The emotion from you coming off the final stage was so evident. We could tell that it meant so much for you here to take this win. Yeah, uh, it did. It's, it's, uh, yeah, it's one rally I always wanted since a win. So, yeah, they, they finally get that and get over the finish line. It's just a big relief off our shoulders. And, uh, yeah, it was, it was unbelievable. So we pushed hard all weekend, and, and, and it was definitely not easy with Josh and Matt all pushing hard. So, yeah, it was a tough weekend, and it probably makes it that bit more special. So it does. Doesn't get much better than this, Noel. No, um, it's the stuff of dreams, all right. Um, I think we're in a race there against the weather on the last day, trying to get through. But uh, oh yeah, it's great. It's great for the team and uh, the lads running the car, and just delighted for Callum. Yeah. Yes, 
Here's the clock of the course, Eamon McGee. It's amazing when you see all that people gathered here for this event, and it just shows you how popular and how strong this event is. So the overall results then, Callum Devine wins by 55.5 seconds ahead of Matt Edwards, Sam Moffat in third, then Marion Evans and Rob Barrable. That's it for the 2023 Wilton Recycling Donegal International Rally. What a challenging weekend it was here for the drivers with the ever-changing weather conditions. It was a special victory, though, for Callum Devine and Noel O'Sullivan, who get to lift that Jim Kennedy perpetual trophy for the very first time. The emotion was so evident coming off that final stage. Well, we've certainly enjoyed our experience here this weekend. We really hope that you've enjoyed watching. But for now, Sláin Gafoil, goodbye from myself and the rest of the On The Limit Sports team.